Hello friends, welcome once again to my new video on understanding risk averse, risk seeking and risk neutral investor. Uh, I am going to discuss uh, these three categories of investors in context of modern portfolio theory. Uh, I am sure all of you are aware of uh, uh, modern portfolio theory and also have heard of these three categories of investors. Uh, but uh, let me elaborate it more from a perspective uh, which will help you to prepare for some exams also. Uh, NISM exam has uh, uh, certain details related to it that you can definitely refer to. Uh, even exams uh, uh, which are CFA and uh, similar relevant exams uh, have context of risk averse, risk seeking and risk neutral investors. So what is the general understanding of uh, risk uh, averse investor? Uh, let me start with that first. Risk averse investor is an investor who does not want risk. Uh, this kind of an investor is more interested in certainty. They want certainty of return. Uh, they are not ready to take risk. Uh, a risk neutral investor is an investor who is indifferent to risk. Very difficult to find such kind of investors in our life. Uh, uh, but you know, here is an investor which is interested in maximizing the return. As I said, uh, you know, it's difficult uh, to even think about such investors. All of us, by nature, or rather, majority of us by nature are risk averse. Some of us would be risk seekers also. So risk seeker is a category of investor who gets thrill or the joy of, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, that excitement of taking risk to generate higher returns. Okay. So uh, this is the general understanding, but let me elaborate it in context of the modern portfolio theory first. So modern portfolio theory, uh, Harry Markowitz is uh, credited with modern portfolio theory, uh, as we all know, and you would have read about it. Uh, but let me just tell you that uh, some of the building blocks of modern portfolio theory uh, are as follows. An investor wants to maximize the return for a given level of risk. Ideally, that is what should be the case and every rational investor would, uh, a rational investor would uh, you know, uh, try to do it. Uh, that means that a, uh, given a choice between two assets with equal rate of return, which means if I am getting 10% and 10% return in two different types of assets, I will prefer the asset which has a lower risk, which means uh, the risk is if it is less in one of the asset, I will go with that particular asset, which is very, very logical uh, uh, in terms of interpretation of it. Okay. Investors consider each investment alternative as being presented by a probability distribution of expected returns over the same holding period. So whenever you make investments, you know, you have some kind of a probability of a return that would come on that particular investment over a, a given period of, of, of uh, time. Okay. And uh, as an investor, what I would focus on is to maximize the utility. And this utility is what we are going to discuss going ahead, which is nothing but how do we look at expected return and the risk that comes from uh, that particular return. Investors choose an action or event with the maximum expected utility. This is also very, very logical to think, you know, I will try to have the maximum expected utility and investors assign utility scores to various portfolio choices available to them. So can I arrive at a utility score? What could be the logic for that particular utility score? Let me explain that utility concept here. Okay. So to understand utility concept, we also need to be sure about one more aspect, which is certainty equivalent rate. This is called a CER also in, a, in an abbreviated way. So investors are assumed to be comparing the utility value of risky portfolio with risk free investment, offering the same utility to determine certain certainty equivalent rate. Okay. So, you know, if I have to determine between a risky investment and a risk free investment, I will factor in the certainty equivalent rate uh, and then only I will decide which is the better investment for me. So certainty equivalent rate is the rate that a risky investment has to offer to be equally attractive with the risk free investment. So risk free investment and risky investments cannot be substituted for each each other. Okay. I mean risk free investment comes without having any botheration of uh, wild swing in the returns. Okay. And risky investments could come with a huge amount of variance or standard deviation. So how do I compare both of them? Okay, that is what is the crux of certainty equivalent rate. A highly risk averse investor may assign a risky portfolio with a CER, which is certainty equivalent rate below the risk free rate of return 
and reject the investment into risky portfolio so you know if i am a investor which is highly risk averse i would say okay i am getting 6% return uh, which is risk free return as an example okay and uh, you know a certainty equivalent rate of uh, that i am deciding is lower than this 6% okay uh, so i am going to reject that particular investment and say no to it so along with the modern portfolio theory and uh, you know the concept of certainty equivalent rate which are linked with each other okay we will now be going to the concept of utility so what is this concept of utility we will first try to understand from risk invest averse investors perspective so the investor who is risk averse we have already seen this concept but i am reiterating will take additional risk only if that risk taking is likely to be rewarded with a risk premium so i need to be rewarded with a risk premium to take uh, you know uh, uh, that risk okay uh, uh, the investor examines the potential risk return trade off of investment alternatives so one thing is very sure that if i am an investor i have two choices one to go with the risk free investment two to select something where there is a risk but i need to be getting a risk premium okay which should be of uh, something which will you know kind of uh, make me take a decision to move to risky investment in lieu of risk free investment okay and that's where this utility concept comes into picture so to understand this let us use the following utility formula which is u is equal to er which is expected rate of return uh, minus 0.5 it is actually 0.5 so you know we have to take that as 0.5 multiplied by a uh so this is the risk uh, aversion coefficient as we call it as and uh, uh multiplied by variance okay so uh, uh in this formula you can see here u represents the utility or score to give this investment in a given portfolio by comparing it to a risk free investment such as treasury bill so when we arrive at u we can compare the investment and say okay this is a good investment for me and i would like to go ahead with this particular investment er is the expected return of the portfolio and this sigma squared is the square of volatility and a is called as the risk aversion coefficient okay so let us move ahead and see with an example again for the risk averse investor you can see here it is a little uh, small in font but you know it needs to be explained so as you can see here that the risk free rate of return is 3% now a risk averse investor will like to go ahead with this only okay but can the risk free investor leave this investment and select some other investment yes that to depend upon the utility that you get from the other investment so we have other variables like expected rate of uh, return of the portfolio risk aversion coefficient we will discuss more about it as we go ahead okay volatility of the security returns which is 16% so the question that we are asking is is there any risk premium here let us check this okay so if we apply the utility formula that we saw earlier okay what do we do we find the utility score of the investor by writing uh, first the expected return which is 6% written as 0.06 minus 0.5 which is the value that we have taken uh, in the formula if you recollect okay multiplied by 2 and 2 is the risk aversion coefficient here multiplied by 16 raised to 2 so what we get as the solution is 3.44 now if you see this 3.44 it is higher than 3 and there is an additional return for the investor so we need to kind of look at this 3 here and compare with this 3 so in this case there is an incentive for the investor to move from risk aversion uh, uh, to uh, the risky portfolio because 3.44 is higher than 3 okay now we have been talking about a risk aversion coefficient so let us also understand that but prior to that let us look at uh, you know risk neutral and risk seeker investor so who is a risk neutral i have already explained this but let me put it again if a risk neutral investor is presented with two possible investments that carry different level of risk he or she considers just the expected return from each investment the risks are irrelevant to him or her so it's not there is no focus on uh, risk here the focus is on return here okay and the risk lover will engage in fair games and gamble so there is a difference you know risk averse investor is always inclined towards risk free investment will move on to the risky investment only if there is a risk premium 
risk neutral investor very difficult to find but says that i am not interested in any uh, risk uh, consideration i am focused on return indifferent to risk and risk lover is excited about the fact that he would get higher return by taking more risks okay now having said that we have also discussed about risk aversion coefficient so let us understand this okay so here we have a question which will help you explain so a portfolio has an expected rate of return of 15% which is written as 0.15 Standard deviation is also 15%, which is written as 0.15. 15% and 0.15 are equivalent values. The risk-free rate is 6%. An investor has the following utility function, which is again given in the, in the formula here. Which value of A, which is risk aversion coefficient, makes the investor indifferent from risky portfolio and risk-free asset? Okay, so there has to be a risk aversion coefficient which will make investor indifferent. So what we have done is that we have first found the utility for T bills. It's very easy because in case of T bills, there is no standard deviation. So what we get as the solution is expected return to be 0.6% minus this entire value that we see here. This will turn into zero because the standard deviation is zero. Uh, risky investments do not have a uh, standard deviation. Risk-free investments do not have a standard deviation value. That is something that we need to uh, know. Second point is uh, utility for risky portfolio is to be arrived by looking at 0.15 minus 1 by 2 into A, which is risk aversion coefficient is what we are trying to find out multiplied by standard deviation uh, or you know uh, volatility as we saw earlier in the formula. So what we write here is 0.15 because 0.15 minus 0, 1 by 2 is 0.5. A multiplied by 0.15 again here, which is the standard deviation raised to 2. Now, by solving this formula, what we get is 0.15 minus 0.1125A. This part of the solution, this part of the solution that we have here, sorry, this part of the solution that we have here will give us, uh, you know, 0.1152A. So now the question is, what risk aversion level should the should would be an investor be indifferent so we solve this utility by writing zero point function by writing 0 0.15 is equal to 0 0.1125 a equals to 0 0.6 this is what we have and then we find out the value of a the answer that comes out is 8 so if the risk aversion coefficient is 8 the investor would be indifferent between two portfolios so in this video what i have done is that i have explained to you the concept of risk uh, risk averse investor risk neutral investor and also the concept of risk seeker and we have also gone on to look at the utility function which investors use to arrive at what should be the uh, portfolio that they should invest in i hope this has made sense for all of you if you find that this video has helped you sharpen your understanding of types of investor please like this video and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for your time